Um, I'm Lillian, um, and I, I actually graduated from NUS a while back when they first had the modular system. So um, we were lucky in that case in that uh, we had a good exposure to research because we started undergraduate research projects all the way until our honours year. And then uh, NUS had, at that time offered a very good master's PhD scholarship. So I also started on a master's um, program here in, in NUS Organic Synthesis. After which I left for UK to do a PhD, again in synthetic organic chemistry, because I enjoy the lab work. And um, to me, um, to further my studies mean that I get to have exposure to more chemistry. Um, I work in a different lab, in a different environment. And um, I guess I spent most of my years growing up in the UK. So um, after I completed my PhD, um, I wanted to see where would a career in chemistry lead me to, especially organic synthetic chemistry. So the obvious choice for me at that time was medicinal chemistry because a lot of um, universities were receiving fundings from companies to start up um, medicinal chemistry research groups. That is, we look for novel molecules or go back and visit the old molecules and see whether they have any clinical, uh, any clinical uh, therapeutic areas. Um, so in Pfizer TWAS, uh, we do actually manufacture API on a medium to a large scale volume. So API is the active pharmaceutical ingredient. Um, and we do it in tonne scale, kilo scale, or tonne scale. So our vessels can be 20,000 litres that big, right? Um, and a typical day is because production is always ongoing for 24 hours. We have, we have people running shifts, right? So uh, it will go on even when we are asleep. So our work um, day to day, we have a standard work plan whereby we will go in and actively, so this is our own proactive monitoring of the process. We will talk to the panel man, we will talk to the engineers, is there any problems, anything you want to highlight, how is this process doing? There will be charts and graphs that we can look at. Uh, we will also follow up with the analytical department when they do the testing to see what's the level, what's the quality of the product. Um, um, and that is our daily work. There's also like for instance um, mentoring as well so we have to take a look at um, the work that our people are doing and guide them, train them. Um, those these are more regular but for the ad hoc, right, these can come in at any time. The, the, the work that the process development scientist does is quite multivariate in the sense that we deal with different departments. It can be safety, uh, engineering, process engineering, quality, analytical, regulatory. Um, so any day people can come and ask, you know, can, can come in with requests that we would have to um, justify or help them out with. Um, I think most important as an undergrad going into industries, you have to be willing to learn, all right? Um, the skills that you have during the undergraduate um, training will come in useful, but it will also be good if you could be exposed to more, um, let's say if you're a chemistry student, more chemistry, in other words, go for further degree study, or actually um, have some more work experience, you know, in that case, maybe, and then um, that will help you deal with the situation. It, it doesn't matter where you are, R&D or development, it will help you deal with the situation better. Well, there are a few departments, I mean, in uh, Pfizer that require chemists, right? Uh, one of them would be quality control. Um, they're the ones who test the drug product. They are the ones who um, the, the act, the test the actually the um, active pharmaceutical ingredients. They are the ones who test the intermediates, the raw materials. They are the ones who do the testing for the in-process controls. That means when they monitor the reaction, so that would be analytical chemistry. They also, they also do a bit of managing of people, all right? For our side, process development chemistry, uh, process development chemist um, and scientists, um, we have diplomas, diploma holders, degree holders in chemistry, organic synthetic or chemical and uh, organic synthetic mainly, um, and we require people who have, like I said, a greater exposure to chemistry, who are able to think creatively, laterally, you know, out of the box, because you're dealing with different situations. 
you be, should be able to, um, and this all this require exposure. Um, there's also a need for the process development scientists to be able to develop a new and new, new um, design and develop novel ways to uh, improve a process to make it faster, cheaper, safer, um, and it also require us to lead and deliver as well. So in that case, um, different um, qualifications will put you in a um, different role because of the responsibility that you will need is different. Okay. So for instance, my technologies will run the lab, they will run this, the um, experiments, the um, analytical chemists will do the analysis, Right? The scientists like myself will put the things together, do the reporting, or come up with the experimental plan. Um, we will also evaluate the results, um, and then we will have to come up with um, cost improvement programs and all that. And we also need to know that um, if there's issues during the troubleshooting, how should we approach the question? How do we should approach the issue? What's the resources available? Um, and generally, I'll be able to. Um, help out the other departments if they have other questions. The, the prospects are really great because a degree in a chemistry doesn't really limit you to just you know, working in the lab. You know, there's people who's doing um, quality assurance, there's people who's also who decided to move into engineering, into safety. So there's a lot of areas for you to grow with a degree in chemistry. Some people even decide to go into sales, um, procurement. You know, when you buy starting materials, you need to know what you're looking for. What's the specifications? And if the supplier were to ask you, I want to do this change, and you'll be, able, you'll be able to tell them whether it's allowed, it's not allowed. You can do regulatory stuff, which sometimes they will ask you, um, what impurities involved, you know, um, you know is, there, is this change considered a big change or not? So there's many, many different roles that a chemist, a person with a degree in chemistry can play. I started off in medicinal chemistry um, at that time in UK was because there was a lot of funding for the research and it provided us with um, a lot of resources to look into anti-cancer drugs. Um, and my, my thinking at that time was that if I start with something like medicinal chemistry, at least I know somewhere there it will end up as a drug to help improve somebody else's life. Um, and that's how I actually plot my, plan my career path to go from something small scale to finally something large scale where people are actually being helped by these um, drugs to improve their lives as well as to uh, make the quality of their life better uh, using all this medicine. So that's the reason why I chose medicine, medicine or chemistry. It's a kind of um, job satisfaction as well as a personal satisfaction to see that what we're doing today does help change lives. And if I were to go to the doctors and be prescribed you know, a Pfizer drug, you know, I'll be very happy because I, I know that, you know, I, could, I might have played a hand in that as well. I would say that a degree uh, in chemistry doesn't limit you to just a chemistry job, right? There's a lot of um, areas that you could venture into. Um, also use this chance um, to explore the different types of chemistry areas and be interested in what you do. Most important is the interest. Um, and then, you know, a lot of things that even though they do not plan, they do not go the way we plan, but be open-minded. There will be people who are there to guide you. You might be new, everybody has to start somewhere. There will be people there to guide you, there will be people there to give you the advice and all that. So be open-minded, be ready to learn and be ready to uh, work um, hard and also it's a good chance for anyone to be in this uh, manufacturing industry because we are dealing with different sectors, different sections. Um, like I've said, you deal with engineers, we deal with analytical chemists, you know, 
we deal with um, regulated, regulatory, people involved in regulatory. So it's a good chance to learn many, many different fields. It, it is a um, ch rapidly changing and um, fast moving industry. So I think it's, it's not boring. It's actually quite exciting because day to day, you do have variations.